Professor Boyle, um, I would like um, to ask you about um, a passage in the memoirs by Richard A. Clark, who was then the chairman of the counterterrorism ter security group at the White House under President George Bush Jr. And the quote comes from his memoirs against all enemies uh, from page number 24. And this was taking place, what he is telling us, on the evening of September 11, 2001. And the quote goes, when later in the discussion Secretary Rumsfeld noted that international law allowed the use of force only to prevent future attacks and not for a ret uh, uh, retribution, Bush nearly bit his head off. No, the president yelled in the narrow conference room, I don't care what the international lawyers say, we are going to kick some ass. Now my question would be, what does this actually mean for the international law? What are the implications of such a statement? Right, well, uh, thank you for uh, calling me. Uh, I'm not going to repeat any of the uh, analysis I have already given of the uh, illegality of the uh, Bush war uh, against Afghanistan. I've already sent you my uh, essays on that. But this uh, quotation by uh, Clark came to my attention after I had written uh, the uh, the speech and then the published versions with all the footnotes. And I think it is uh, critical for uh, uh, definitively establishing the clear-cut uh, illegality of the Bush war against Afghanistan. And let me do it this way. Let us suppose that uh, I am uh, a prosecutor of uh, former President Bush before an international criminal court uh, for his uh, war uh, of aggression against Afghanistan. This is not to say that the current ICC, International Criminal Court, would have jurisdiction, but let us suppose that uh, uh, there is a state or some other tribunal that would have jurisdiction to uh, try it. So what I would do is as follows. First, I would uh, subpoena uh, Mr. Clark to appear. And uh, he would appear before the uh, tribunal. And I would uh, uh, qualify him as uh, an expert, certainly chairman of the counterterrorism security group at the White House under President Bush uh, on September 11th, uh, and that he was there for this uh, conversation. Because technically, uh, right now, his book, uh, his account of the book, uh, only qualifies as hearsay. Um, so at a, at a war crimes prosecution, you would need him uh, to come personally to testify, although uh, in, in these international tribunals, uh, judges will accept uh, hearsay. But uh, the bottom line is uh, it, it's best to have him uh, come because he was there, he was a witness, and what he would personally testify, he heard the president say is not uh, hearsay in accordance with uh, Anglo-American uh, uh, common law rules of uh, evidence. So what we have here, again, then, is I would ask uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Clark uh, to repeat, uh, I would ask Mr. Clark uh, if these were his memoirs, and I would, as you did, uh, 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 repeat this quote and ask Clark, you know, is that a, a fair and uh, accurate statement uh, of what was said at the meeting on the evening of uh, September 11th? And uh, uh, I take it he would say yes, and I would say, would, would you please uh, repeat it? And then uh, he would repeat it. Now, at that point, you know, I'd say thank you, uh, 
uh, very much, uh, uh, Mr. Clark. And then I would proceed to argue to the uh, tribunal as follows. Namely, um, this was the uh, uh, critical meeting on the evening of September 11th, uh, where the decision to launch uh, a war against Afghanistan was made by uh, President Bush. And you will note that his uh, Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld, uh, a man very experienced at the highest levels of the United States government, uh, he's not a lawyer himself, but he had uh, been previously Secretary of Defense and uh, White House uh, Chief of Staff and had been involved in these types of decisions before and knew from his own personal experience what the international law is uh, with respect to launching um, military operations. And uh, uh, he would be not, not the senior member of the cabinet, that's technically the uh, uh, Secretary of State, but in terms of seniority, he would be the most senior member there. And uh, Rumsfeld pointed out what were the requirements of international law. And he said, uh, quote, international law allowed the use of force only to prevent future attacks, unquote. Now, that is not completely uh, uh, correct because it, it has to be imminent attacks, not just any uh, future attacks. But again, he's not a lawyer. He, he's basically cautioning and, and advising the president that uh, an, a war against Afghanistan uh, would be illegal here because there was no uh, indication that uh, uh, anyone in Afghanistan or Afghanistan itself was going to launch a future attack against the United States. And then Rumsfeld said, um, international allowed the use of force only, quote, and not for retribution, unquote. Now that is a correct statement of the law, uh, even as interpreted by the United States government itself, the United States government has always taken the position that uh, retaliation, reprisal, retribution are not uh, sufficient justification for the threat and use of force, let alone uh, going to war that uh, 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 the threat and use of force under the UN Charter uh, can only be used in uh, self-defense. Indeed, um, the United States government did uh, reconsider this point. Uh, I have a citation to that in one of my books. I think back in the 1970s, whether they should include retaliation or reprisal or retribution, and they rejected it and said, no, we, we stand by uh, our interpretation of the UN Charter that uh, the threat and use of force, let alone going to war, can only be conducted in self-defense as authorized by Article 51 uh, of the uh, United Nations Charter. And clearly uh, Rumsfeld is pointing out that to go to war against uh, Afghanistan under these circumstances uh, would, would be retribution and not self-defense. And he's aware of that because of his previous uh, cabinet uh, positions. Uh, again, not a lawyer himself, but he uh, had been given legal advice uh, prior to this by the Pentagon's top lawyers, and he knew exactly what the United States government position was on this matter, that uh, war uh, in retribution is, is clearly illegal. Now, uh, so the president here had, in my opinion, been properly advised by the Secretary of Defense that going to war uh, against Afghanistan uh, would be clearly illegal. So he had the proper advice here. And, and let me say, you know, uh, President Bush um, is not a lawyer himself. 
so okay, we'll we'll do that. Unlike President Obama, who is a lawyer, uh, but he had been properly advised here by his Secretary of Defense, who would be in charge of carrying out uh, his order to go to war against uh, Afghanistan. The the order would go directly from the president to the Secretary of Defense, and then on to uh, head of. Uh, U.S. Central Command at that time, I believe, it was Tommy Franks. Um, so he, he was properly advised here uh, by uh, the Secretary of Defense. Now, the um, president's response was, no, I don't care what the international lawyers say. Okay. So notice here, uh, the President uh, Bush had been properly advised by the Secretary of Defense as to the requirements of international law that a war against Afghanistan under these circumstances would be illegal, and yet uh, the President says he didn't care what the international lawyers uh, say or what are the requirements of international law. He made that very clear in this uh, statement. And then... Uh, even far worse uh, was the second part of the uh, uh, statement attributed to the president, quote, we are going to kick some ass, unquote. Uh, let me repeat that, quote, we are going to kick some ass, unquote. So that is the uh, president's motivation and intent uh, for going to war against Afghanistan. He wanted to uh, quote, kick some ass, unquote. Well, um, clearly, however you want to interpret the phrase uh, kick some ass, um, it, it is not for self-defense. Uh, this is uh, retribution. This might be catharsis. Who knows what it means to, to kick some ass? Yeah, may I uh, ask, does it, has, uh, does it have anything to do with the law to kick some ass? Of course not. That, that's my whole point. It, it is uh, antinomia. It is against international law to go to war in order to kick some ass. Um, that, that's very clear. And I think that th th that this account by by Clark is the uh, definitively establishes that the uh, Bush war against Afghanistan uh, was illegal. Uh, it, it was a war uh, of aggression, and it would constitute a uh, Nuremberg uh, crime against peace. Yeah. And certainly uh, w what I just told you would be the way I would argue to an international war crimes tribunal on this statement and testimony by, by Mr. Clark. And I, I, as I said, I've sent you all my previous analysis that had come out uh, based on all the sources prior uh, uh, to this statement, which you're free to read. Uh, but I think this definitively establishes that, that the war against Afghanistan was illegal, uh, indeed criminal. And uh, I know, regretfully, as you know, uh, Germany uh, went along with this. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, for your, you know, your German audience. Uh, yeah, I may remember my understanding that is Germany still has troops over there. Yes, and um, I should mention that you told already in October of 2001 Der Spiegel, the political magazine here in Germany, that the that this war in Afghanistan is illegal. That is correct, and and now the uh, uh, to follow up on that interview I gave to uh, Der Spiegel. This now constitutes, this statement by Clark, is the definitive proof uh, of my uh, previous uh, analysis. It definitively establishes uh, that, that the war is illegal, that despite whatever the Bush people were saying at the UN or whatever, it had nothing to do with self-defense, that, that Bush knew, based on what Rumsfeld told him, it had nothing to do with self-defense, uh, and that his intent and his motivation were, quote, to kick some ass, unquote. Yeah. So uh, I 
you know, what more can I say beyond that? Uh, I think certainly one could, on the basis of this uh, statement, where, where Bush basically incriminated himself, uh, convict Bush of uh, uh, acts of aggression uh, and, and a Nuremberg crime against peace. Yeah. Um, one question that I would have is um, that you've mentioned Donald Rumsfeld. Donald Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney implemented on 9-11 the continuity of government plans, COG. And um, I think that the US Constitution is um, silenced, so to speak, by some of the uh, of the um, of the let's say the rules of COG but this is not really a topic in in American uh, political discussion in American opinion in American public uh, discussion and so on um, why do you think so I mean this is a real real serious matter well of course that you know that's a uh, separate issue from this. I, I yes, I know, but 9-11, I mean, uh, in my analysis, uh, COG on 9-11, the implementation, the activation of those plans is very important. I agree with you 100% that the, uh, what you had then was a, uh, a parallel, separate government, uh, COG, set up uh, under the uh, control of Cheney where uh, Cheney could get direct uh, command access to U.S. military forces and the uh, Central Intelligence Agency, yes. And so you would have um, two competing sources of authority that, in my opinion, probably continued for the rest of the uh, uh, Bush administration, one coming from Cheney, and another coming from President Bush. And we know that, of course, Cheney is, is a neoconservative, and you understand his, um, uh, where, where he's coming from. And this can account for some of the uh, anomalies we saw uh, during the uh, Bush administration, where uh, the, uh, the Pentagon was doing things that seem to be engaging in uh, escalating the situation, like the scrambling of the uh, 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 nuclear missiles out at Minot Air Base and bombers and uh, things of this nature. It was an extremely uh, dangerous situation, and I agree with you 100% on that. Yeah. But here, uh, we do have President Bush basically incriminating himself for uh, a war of aggression and uh, uh, a Nuremberg crime against peace. Yeah. And I, I would add, based on what we've seen since, since the start of the war, um, it, it's pretty much degenerated into uh, uh, outright genocide against the uh, uh, Afghanis. We, we have no idea how many uh, Afghanis have been exterminated as a result of this war because the Pentagon refuses to produce any casualty figures. Yeah, we don't But do body my counts. Estimation, my estimation is anywhere from one million to four million people um, ha have been killed. Now, if you are interested, um, Professor uh, Gideon Polya, P-O-L-Y-A, has a website where uh, he does some calculations on how many uh, were killed in, in Afghanistan since 9-11. I think he goes up to six million. You know, I, I, you'd have to read Professor Polia for yourself and talk to him about that figure. But to the best of my knowledge, he's the only, uh, he's in Australia, he's the only academic uh, uh, professor who has tried to put a number on how many Afghanis have been killed uh, starting with the war in, in October of 2001. Yeah, um, the last question that I would have is
You know this quote that uh, when fascism comes back it wouldn't say I'm fascism but it would say I'm anti-fascism. Is uh, our time an expression of this? Do we... is this what we go through? Well Lars, I, you know, uh, as you know I have a uh, PhD in political science from uh, Harvard specializing in international relations, and, and to get that degree, I went through the same program that, that produced Henry Kissinger before me. They gave me uh, Kissinger's old uh, office there at Harvard's Center for International Affairs. So I studied an enormous amount about the origins of the uh, First World War and the uh, Second World War. And uh, I'm afraid we're, we're back in the uh, mid to late 1930s between you and me. So, yes, uh, uh, that's, that's sort of my conclusion. And having read and studied an enormous amount uh, about the origins of the Second World War, I'm, I'm afraid the United States and uh, Europe seem to have um, reverted to, to that historical era. Okay, thank you very much for this conversation. Well, thank you, and I, 